Hey, Jim Ross here with Cinematics HD. Today we're going to do a dolly setup, a circular dolly setup. It's a scorching hot day in Georgia, but that's not going to stop us from setting up this dolly track. I just wanted to walk you through uh, what it takes. Okay, let's go. First things first, the circular dolly setup takes eight pieces of curved track and it's pretty big, so you need a truck. And get some help. You don't want to do this by yourself. Typically, the rails will be pretty filthy and anytime you are working with metal, there is a chance of getting cut by a sharp edge or a burr. So wear your gloves. We're going to lay out the track roughly where we want to use it. Once you get the track roughly laid out, you start locking it together. It's fairly simple and may remind you of your model train set you had when you were a kid. Once all the ends are flush, you snap the locks to secure the track. If you are circling a product or a set, remember that you can't drive over the track, so have the product inside the circle like we do here. I chose where to lay the rails based upon the best spot for the track on the driveway and was not worrying about the mower. I knew that I could move the mower. Here we're laying out boards both to protect the lawn and to make a flat surface for the track ties. Once you have assembled the track, it's time to start leveling it. First, we flush out a rough level with the boxes. I have full, half, and quarter apple boxes. When you see low spots, you build them up with an apple box. For smaller spaces, use blocks and use the wedges to build height in increments. Then I use two techniques to fine tune the level. I use an actual bubble level to test if the rails are level. And I use the Porter Glide wheels themselves to make sure there are no low spots. Literally, you let gravity do the work for you to fine tune your track. As you can see, it's very much trial and error. And you'll find as you fix one part, you create a problem elsewhere. So you'll be going back and forth quite a bit. However, the success of your shot depends on the track being level. Otherwise, the camera angle will rise and fall, even though the track ride seems very smooth. Now, how much support your track requires depends on what you're using to film. If you are using a cinema dolly like a Fisher or a Chapman, you'll need to support every one of the cross ties on each side. Here, I'm only using a doorway dolly supporting the camera, so we can get away with less support to save time. Once I'm happy with the tracks, I'll add the dolly, because the added weight will affect the level of the track. You'll find yourself fine-tuning yet again. Here you can see Chris tapping the track to see if there is space under the track tie. This would result in a dip when the dolly runs over, so he fills the spot with a wedge. Meanwhile, I continue to look for places that need adjustment, using the added weight of the doorway dolly to flush out soft spots. And it's a good excuse to go back to being a kid and go for a ride on my very own man-sized train set. The circular dolly shot is great for showing products that you want to circle in 360 degrees. You could circle around a mower or a product like this with a Movi or a Ronin, and it simply is not going to give you the dreamlike, perfect centered effect that you get from a circular dolly track. It is a smooth, flowing shot and gets you a lot of bang for your buck. It may take a lot of time to set up and a lot of equipment to execute, but the results are worth it. As with anything in the production business, you get what you pay for. This setup came from PC&E in Atlanta. As with most production equipment, it's best to rent than to buy. This setup would cost over 12 grand if we bought it. Instead, we rent it only when we need it for a fraction of that. I hope you enjoyed this HD Pro's tip on setting up Circular Dolly Track. I'm cinematographer Jim Ross with Cinematics HD in Atlanta. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.